ambient sensors. Herein lies the solution to yesterday's problem about how do we detect floods and monitor water levels so that we do not lose lives. This is a float switch. It's called ZP4510, and it's not an industrial sensor, but it has many qualities that you probably cannot appreciate until you start doing on a hands-on project. One application is my rain collector. It comes off the roof, goes down the tube, and comes out here, and I've been trying to monitor the water. Uh, right now we have basically have a visual sensor, but just to build a floating attachment for this thing actually takes a lot of thought. Um, with a $2 switch and a $10 transceiver, these solutions become so affordable that even a community-based open source network of people watching the river would be more effective. Um, we could create a redundant system and people love doing that sort of thing. That's when I started to appreciate this rigid, non-porous, but super buoyant material, which it just fascinates me just that all by itself. Without experience, you'll just think this is uh, sloppy manufacturing and a cheap thing with this big gap here. But then with experience, you realize that the algae and the other conditions that are seen out in the wild, they're gonna ask for extra clearance so things can self-clean. Say that you wanna monitor the river and notice if it's rising too fast, a flood warning is necessary. When I first started with electronics, I thought that I would want to have a continuous sensor with very fine data. With a few years writing code and doing a wireless transmission, I realized that every byte counts. The code can become simpler if we can find a way to do it with a binary piece of information. Now, I would probably keep these switches for robustness and simply take time samples to notice how fast is the water rising and then generate a warning uh, data packet from that. And there's plenty of software developers and data scientists who are between jobs and would enjoy getting involved, enhancing the data from there and contributing online for free. So what's my role in all this? Besides showing you one sensor and some half-baked ideas, well, I really believe that this particular lab has a pretty well 360 degree sampling of the sensing, monitoring, and robotics space such that if I continue to bring up topics and we still have a crisscrossing community, the best experts can find each other. And then uh, it just becomes a hub for generating the most viable, affordable ideas that we can start on our own. Your resume can say, I waited 15 years for the industrial equipment to come to my company. Or you could say, um, I saved lives for free.